All right, guys, as we head out of the station at the speed of a herd of turtles, look to your right-hand side, put a hand in the air, and give a big wave to the hard-working station masters of Nairobi. Thank you! <laughs> if you keep looking to the right, you'll see a big glass enclosure, home to the African penguins. African penguins are warm water penguins. They live on the coast of Africa. They're very friendly. So we have to go by there and look down. Don't be surprised to see an African penguin following you every step of the way. But very friendly African penguins. I do too. Serengeti Express here at Busch Gardens, Tampa. Woo! Behind these trees on your left hand side, the Edge of Africa. Edge of Africa is a self-guided tour. You can get close to a pride of African lions, hyenas, meerkats, and other small animals. There's also a giant tank with the mighty hippos and the Nile crocodile, all in the Edge of Africa. Next is Cobra's Curse. Cobra's Curse is a family coaster. It's also a spinning coaster. If you look to the right to see an elevator, that'll take that car 70 feet in the air and launch it forward, directly towards that giant snake. Partway through the ride, you'll travel backwards and finish off by actually spinning. While waiting to get on this ride, the queue line is air conditioned and you can look through a glass wall at live venomous snakes. That's Cobra's curse. The Blue and Beige roller coaster is Montu. Montu is a steel and murder roller coaster. Your feet will dangle beneath you throughout the entire ride as Montu flips you upside down seven times. That's speeds between 60 to 70 miles an hour. Machu has been consistently ranked as one of the top roller coasters in the United States. That's Machu. We're coming out on the Serengeti Belt, a wild animal habitat. These animals can and they will cross the rail at any time. For your safety, please remain seated at all times with your arms and legs inside the train throughout the entire trip. And please make sure face masks remain over your nose and mouth throughout the entire trip. Oh yeah. Go around the end of the Serengeti here. But coming up are the reticulated giraffe. These giraffe can grow over 18 feet in height. They do most everything standing oh, wow. up, including giving birth. The first experience in life of a That's baby amazing. giraffe is a six foot drop to the ground. They're one of the few animals they can see in color. And although they have a very long neck, they the same number of vertebrae in their neck as humans in that seven. Guys, look at the top of the second hill. Do you anybody see it? That's one of the babies. One of the baby reticulated giraffe at the top of the hill. We have two out here somewhere, but that's one of them. The small tan antelope up on the hill are the impala. The impala can run about 50 miles an hour. And they will cr jump crisscross pattern over each other to escape predators. The impala top of the hill. Oh, wait a minute, that's, that's the other baby laying down. We got one standing up and one laying down. They're both, both of the babies, oh, wow. top of the hill. 
I thought it was the Impala, but that's the baby giraffe. Oh my goodness! Only a couple of months old. Now the next time you're at the park, if you want to feed the giraffe, you can use the Serengeti Safari Tour. That's an extra feed that you get out on the truck, not on the Serengeti belt. You can actually touch the giraffe and have your hand feed them as well. The Serengeti Safari Tour. Uh, they're coming up to the end of their day, so come back in another day and you can ride the Serengeti Safari Tour, as well as any of the other wonderful tours we have at the park. For everybody's safety, please remain seated at all times. Wow. Over to the left leg down, it's a dark gray antelope with short horns, no wildebeest. Also known as gray bearded new. Wildebeest in the wild travel the herds in the millions. When they migrate, that migration can be seen from the International Space Station. Baby wildebeest right after birth is required to get up and run with the herd. Or it might be left behind all the way to a left laying down are the wildebeest. Now the tan deer-like animals to your left on the top of the little hill are the greater kudu. Beautiful animals. When they get threatened by a predator, they'll stand perfectly still in tall grass. They'll wait for the predator to go right on by. The greater kudu can hold that statue-like pose for up to two hours. Now I'm going to tell you something about the greater kudu. All day long, they hide in the trees at the top of the hill by the tunnel. You're one of only two trips that I know of that got to see them clearly. You guys are lucky. You got to see the greater kudu. Now coming up on the right, two very large gray birds are female ostrich. The ostrich is the largest of the bird species. They're totally flightless. They're very powerful legs. The kick from an ostrich has enough power to kill a full-grown lion. The ostrich are on the right. Coming up on the right, the antelope laying down are with a circular pattern on the back end of water bucks. Water are not aquatic animals, they will jump into rivers and streams to evade predators. And at the top of the hill on the right are the white rhinos. Now the white rhino get the name from an African word that translates into wide, referring to their wide mouth. Rhino horn is not a real horn, not connected to the skull. Rhino Monster horn is connected to the out. face, it's made of keratin. Yeah. Same material as human fingernails and hair. Well, so if you think about it, a rhino horn is just one big nose hair. And if the rhino's horn is nothing but hair, why don't we go to all the barber shops, sweep up the shavings, package it, sell this rhino horn. We're never going to have to kill any more of these wonderful animals for that useless material. There are five subspecies of rhino left in the world. All of them are endangered because of hunting from that horn. The white rhino, third largest land animal on the planet.
On the right hand side of the train is Kumba. Kumba gets her name from an African word that translates into roar. The Kumba will flip you upside down seven times at speeds between 60 to 70 miles an hour. So if you're in Congo and you're looking for thrills and excitement, be sure to experience the roar of Kumba. Coming up on the right hand side of the train is an animal habitat with some large brown antelope, the bongos. Bongo antelope are very rare, only about 100 left in the wild. There's around 500 in human care and the males will weigh around 900 pounds. Bongo antelope were thought to be extinct and then they were rediscovered around the 1950s. On the right are the bongos. On the left hand side of the train is Stanley Bell, home of the Super Roller Coaster, Tiger, and the Stanley Bell Blackman. We're in around the corner, it's just in the street, the party of fun. There's a little one's can ride kitty rides. They might even meet Elmo and Big Bird Live. A Sesame Street, the party of fun. We're coming into Stanley Bell Station. Please remain seated until we come to a full and complete stop. Now this was a one way trip, we started in Nairobi. We're coming into Stanleyville. Everyone will be exiting here at Stanleyville. Stanleyville has only one exit gate. It's at the front of the train. So guys, when we do come to a full and complete stop, we will exit all the way to the front of the train. I hope you enjoyed the ride on the Serengeti Express. Enjoy the rest of your day here at Bush Gardens. We're coming into Stanleyville Station. Please remain seated until we come to a full and complete stop. Our folks now safe to exit to the platform side only.